why does a church need branding? Hey, I'm Jason. And I'm Kurt. And uh, we're Artspeak Creative and part of the team at Artspeak Creative. Uh, we help a lot of our clients with branding. So today we want to talk about church branding. Why does a church need branding? Why all this hype about branding? If you look around, you, there's books out there and, and probably plenty of people talking about the need for branding. But if you're a church, you're about the gospel, right? What does that mean? That's oh, yeah. all, that's, the good news. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that matters. That's all that matters. But here's the thing. The church has been around for a couple thousand years. And when the first progenitors of the gospel went out into the world, they had a message that sounded a lot like great news. Yeah. If you lived in that ancient world and, and your whole upbringing, your culture, your environment told you that either you had to work really hard to be in good favor with God, the gods, and you were never sure if you were really in the right place where either God seemed perhaps distant and harsh and unforgiving, or at least uh, there was a lot of work involved, or on the flip side, the gods were capricious and ununderstandable, and who knows what they would do next. And here comes a message that God had come near. Yes. He had given mercy. He had given us an indescribable gift. And with that, wanted a relationship with us. And those people loved that message. They ate it up. They were hungry for it. It was joyous. But you know what? A few things have happened since then. And the church on the planet, the ones given this message to go spread it around the globe, and they have, but they've also been somewhat less than perfect. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, from working on my master's in theological study was from Dr. Gary McGee. He, uh, I'll never forget it. He said that the church has looked different and sounded different every 50 years and every 500 miles since Jesus. And now he didn't say that as a bad thing. He, he actually said it as a really good thing, a missional thing, that, 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 that the church has always been overcoming obstacles and rolling over into new language groups and new people groups and has been adopting and adapting itself. In fact, he went on to say that the real problem with the branding of the church has when it has become synonymous with a specific culture, but where it most is alive has been historically or is today where it's adapting itself to the next language, to the next people, where it's on mission, that the church on mission is most alive. And, and the reality is that today, when you go out to tell your community, hey, I'm starting a church or come to church, and the, the idea in your mind of this life-giving, energized place full of possibilities, full of love, full of hope. When those sound waves leave your lips and cross through the culture in between you and them and into their mind, it is going to be shaped by 2,000 years of history. It's gonna be shaped by their last experience with church. And when the picture comes into focus in their mind, they're thinking about that last time they went to church and were so hurt by it. Or that time they were in church as a kid and they were bored stiff. Or they're thinking about atrocities, scandals, falsehoods, hypocrisy that they see in the world around them. And the picture that comes into focus for them is nothing like it was for you. And that's a branding problem. That's a communication problem. I mean, it's, it, that's what it boils down to. You can call it branding, you could call it marketing, you can call it, we call it art, call it, it throughout history, different things, but it, it's a communication thing. I've got a idea in my head, I have a concept, I've got these feelings and thoughts and ideas that I wanna now communicate so that you might think and enjoy and believe and, and have everything that I'm thinking and seeing through, but I've gotta communicate that to you. 
And communication isn't easy. And when you're talking about overcoming big barriers like atrocities and difficulties and scandals and these things, like it's a big deal. How do you take truth and communicate it? That, that's been the challenge for 2000 years. And so it's really, while lots of has changed, uh, at the same time, maybe, maybe not much has. And so as the church, it's still our job to reach people that are outside of that message, who need it the most. But those are probably the people who are the least interested in our culture. The people that need it the most are the least interested. And so that's where the challenge is for us as the church in the modern world, in our culture. How do we bridge that divide? How do we get through that culture gap and and still get the message across. And see, it's one thing, it's one thing in, in the marketing world to reach people who are looking for you already. It's, in fact, there's lots of great tools that make that easy. Google ads and search ads and where you can make sure that someone who is looking for you can find you. But it's another thing entirely to go get out in front of people who are not looking at you at all. In fact, who may have decided that they're not interested in what you have to say and then change that to put something in front of them that is so far beyond what they expected to hear from you that they're forced to question their assumptions about you, where you force them to take a second look. We call that the power of intrigue. And I believe that is the secret sauce <laughs> the church must include in its message today because mm -hmm. we must get through the mental barriers that are already set up. If we want to take a minute, if, we, if they're gonna listen to us at all, we have to make them take a second look and question the decisions that they've already made about you so they can hear the good news that's hidden in all the noise that they hear when they hear the word church. I love that. The secret sauce that the church must embrace is intrigue. The church needs to become intriguing again. Isn't that why you started doing what you wanted to do in church leadership? That's why I went into it. That's why I still love coming alongside leaders and helping them. That's why, that's why we do what we do. Like I, I, I just believe if you're watching this video right now, like that, that motivates you. How can I engage with? How can I have a conversation with? How can I inspire those that are outside, not just outside the walls, but they might even be outside mentally. The thought of ever becoming a part of something like that, you, we've got to become intriguing again. We've got, the church must become intriguing again. Like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know you thought that way. I didn't know. And, and there's probably, the, the crazy thing is, the, the ideas and thoughts and life giving, the opportunity that is in your head that you want to communicate to your whole community, there are a lot of people in your community that if they could just hear you, if they could just hear your message, they would be drawn to it. They would love it. The problem is sometimes they're hearing all the other noise. They're hearing all of the presuppositions that they have. They're hearing all the hurdles. They don't, they don't see it. They don't hear it. That's, to me, that's the importance of branding. Absolutely. Influencing our influence in the community. How do we do that? I mean, that's not just going to be easy. You can't just put up an ad. <laughs> because, you know, that's what happens though. Sometimes there's church leaders out there say, you know what? I don't need any advertising. We're not going to do, we don't need any of this talk about communication and the community or marketing. These somehow become bad words. And then this is what's fascinating to me because I'm in that world. I, I watch it and all of a sudden that same, that same person is two weeks out from their big event. Easter's coming or Christmas or, or even just Sunday. <laughs> it's a new message series. And then what do they do? They go so far, they swing the pendulum so far away from who they are and what they said was gonna work. And all of a sudden they're out there paying or they're put up a big billboard that says, come on and see, come on down, free communion, whatever else they're giving away. <laughs> And uh, hopefully it's free, I guess. But, but they, no, they do. They, all, of a sudden they're, all of a sudden, their noise in the community, their, their advertising in the community, their expression in the community 
is so contrary to who they really are because they waited till they were stressed. They waited till the last minute. They waited till the only thing left was to boost this post that says, come on and see, come and join us. And, it, and it's, it's different than what they would actually say. And here's what ends up happening. The very people who would have been drawn by their message, the very people that would have resonated with this, that vision and those values, now that you're not acting through those visions and values, you're not communicating who you are to your community, you're communicating, if you're already a Christian, you might like this, come and join us. All of a sudden, you're actually begin to push away the very people that would have resonated. That to me is what is important about this conversation. Because if you're gonna communicate effectively with anyone, you have to understand them. They have to, first, they have to be listening. If they're not listening to you, then you're not communicating. Once you can get them to listen, that's the intrigue, that's your foot in the door. If you can intrigue them, they start listening. Now that they're listening, they have to understand you. And so you have to use words that mean the right thing to their mind. And that might be different than your own vocabulary. You have to know them well enough to know what to say, to communicate the thought, the meaning that you want to communicate them. And then they have to feel you. They have to feel it. You have to get through the mind to the heart and then they begin to act on it. And so to do that, it takes a long process of discovery. You have to know first who you are. That's important. You need to know who you are. You need to know what your message is. Because that part of you is not going to change. That's your why. That's your purpose. That's the core of who you and your organization is. You have to know what that message is. But not just assume you know what it is. I don't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but you should actually be able to write it down. This is my message. This is my why. This is who we are. And I'm not talking about the, you know, 25 years ago, there was a retreat and they wrote it on these words on a wall that everyone has ignored for the last 24 years. What I'm saying is like you watching this should be able to write down, this is who I am. Because sometimes I think we just assume that we know who we are without doing the deep, sometimes difficult journey into articulating, this is me and this is why. Yeah, and that is a difficult journey. It takes some really heavy thinking and, uh, and processing. And then the other side of it, though, is you have to understand who you're talking to. And as churches, we're the king of saying, oh, we're trying to reach everybody. Everybody. We want, we want a church that looks like heaven. Amen. Uh, which is great. Yes, exactly. please, let's not, uh, let's not limit our churches to only our people that look like us or the ethnicities that look like us. No, let's, yeah, let's reach everybody. But you need to understand that the people in your area have their own culture. And the people in that area that are not going to church right now, the people that you might look at and you analyze and you say, you know what, we need to reach this people. God is calling us to reach this people. They're going to have their own culture, their own vocabulary, their own needs, their own pressures, their own fears. Because that's the part that you're going to have to talk to if they're going to listen to you. They don't care about you. That's true. They don't care about your story. Your brand is not about you. Right. It's about your message to them. They don't care until it's about them. Just like a conversation at, at a dinner party, you're going to get a lot farther uh, in building relationships with people if you uh, get them talking about themselves rather than you talking about you all the time. And so the second half of this discovery process is to figure out who are they, to pick that center of the target audience that you are most called to reach, most enabled to reach, most need to reach. Who are they? What are their fears? What is their language? What comes to their mind when they think about church? What fears do they have about church? And then begin to, to craft your message to answer those, to get through the barriers and to resonate with their heart. And that's the third piece is the message. What is your unique message? Know who you are, know who your audience is, and then what is it in your message 
that, that is unique to you. Not just in general, not 2,000 years, 20,000 feet up, but like, but you, you have a unique message. It's who you are and it's who they are and it's the value that you can add uniquely because you're you and they're them. Uh, understanding those three things, that can then create a lens that really dictates how and what you express to your community. And so you can start working on this in fact, I hope you will. I hope you'll start thinking through these questions. In fact, we've, we've developed a set of questions that we'd love for you to download just to help you think through, who am I, who are they, and what's my message to them? And so there's a link and uh, feel free to click that, download this and spend some time processing whether it's just you right now, maybe you're a church planter and you're just planning for this, Maybe you're, uh, you're just getting started. Maybe you've got a whole team and you're gonna sit down with these questions with your whole team and go over them. It's but great team building activity, really. So even if you are by yourself, you wanna grow your team. You, if you wanna reach people, you need to involve other people. This is a great conversation starter that will build ownership for those that are a part of, just by allowing them to be a part of the conversation because they are deeply personal organizational questions that talk about mission that will end up guiding the future. So invite some people into those questions. Maybe you have a staff that would be a natural, uh, you know, group to, to share these questions with. Maybe you are gonna go on a retreat or just take some time, begin to build a team around these questions. Either way, click the link, free download, and uh, start exploring it and watch how it begins, the answers to those questions begin to create momentum for your mission in your city.